Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Go check out my website at skyazrael.com. Let's talk about trauma. There's all kinds of fucked up shit that happens in this world. Many of you out there may have been diagnosed or you may have self-diagnosed, something I suggest against, but you may have done it anyways. You may have decided or found out that you have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. One of the ways that we end up with PTSD is by not properly processing trauma immediately after the event. So that event ends up as an outlier, kind of a, a speed bump uh, in our past. When we look back on our past, we have certain outliers and the areas that we don't process properly end up being those, those speed bumps those obstacles. They're obstacles towards our happiness. They keep us from being happy. These are our triggers. Why do we end up this way? And why don't others? This is what I've wondered. Is two people can go through the same thing and one person can end up with PTSD and the other person won't. There's no guarantee of PTSD you could have the worst thing happen to you and get through it just fine. And there are people out there that do. There are people out there that get gang raped in alleyways, left for dead, beaten and bludgeoned. And they don't, it doesn't ruin their life. Maybe they, they go on and start a foundation to help other women who've been raped. So all of a sudden, this horrible trauma, this terrible, terrible thing has created a pathway for them to help others. So it's not that it was a good thing that it happened, but not everybody ends up paralyzed, ends up self-isolated, ends up self-destructive because of what happened to them. It really helps to talk it out. And I've noticed that in my life, when I've gone through fucked up shit, particularly the murders, I've been through a lot of murders, more than 20. Some of them I've talked about, some of them I haven't been able to. And the ones that I haven't been able to, unfortunately, are ones that I may not have understood properly. No one was able to really tell me why it happened explain it to me properly and I was left with just, just this kind of confusion and anger and that kind of stuff, especially when it's something so extreme and you witness it, it can tear down your whole world view. It can really fuck you up. It can haunt you. It helps to have someone to talk uh, to, a friend. You can pay for a, a therapist. Sometimes a therapist is better than a friend because they don't understand, but it depends on what it is. You might not be able to talk about a scenario with a therapist. Now, I will tell you this. Therapists have a, a, a code, an ethic, uh, where they are not allowed to snitch on you. You go in there and tell them that you did this, you did that. They're not going to go and call the cops on you. But I don't trust anyone. <laughs> and I remember sitting in my shrink's office going to a psychiatrist and he asked me so how, how was your week and two days earlier I had just watched a murder I just watched one of my friends die at my feet he died at my feet looking me in the eye as he had been shot screaming yelling as he's bleeding out on the sidewalk as the cops are coming help me help me and I stood there and watched him die and my therapist is like, so how was your week? Anything come up? Anything happen? You know, what's going on? And I just sit there, oh, it's fine. Nothing happened. Just a boring, regular week. I watched one of my friends get stabbed to death. He got stabbed maybe 30, 40, 50 times. Just over and over and over. I watched it. It was inches away from me. The two guys that stabbed him were also friends of mine. This was a cleaning house. This was a punishment. Sometimes punishment means death. You can't do anything about it. You gotta let it happen. You can't stop it. You have to just mind your own business. 
I'm minding my own business as a man is being murdered literally right next to me. You can't talk about it. The next day out in the streets, you can't be like, yo, did you hear about what happened? That was crazy, huh? Nothing, nothing. You can't talk about it. My shrink is like, so, you know, what's going on with you? Well, I'm just like, nothing. Nothing's going on with me. So sometimes you can't talk about shit. And those types of scenarios have stood out in my life, have triggered me, have haunted me, caused nightmares. It's not fun watching your friends die. You need people to talk about your problems with. If you don't have anybody and you can't pay anybody, what do you do? Well, you can write it out. You can journal. See, it doesn't matter if it's one-sided and it doesn't matter if you don't get a response. You may get a response in your head to your own writing. You may write out what happened. It, what happened to you? What, what's the scenario that traumatized you? Write it out. Tell the whole story from beginning to end. Of course, it's from your perspective, but the writing of it, the, the, the getting it out is therapeutic. This is one reason why when you go to a, a shrink, a psychiatrist, which I used to go once a week, I did that for seven years. Largely they sit there and listen and you, you can be, be like, man, I'm paying you a hundred bucks an hour. And you haven't said shit yet. You just sit there taking notes and listening. It's part of the process that psychiatrists and in the psychology field that they're taught in school. They're taught to listen. Be a better listener than you are a talker. Because very oftentimes, the client will discover their own truth through their own words. And that's a more powerful way to learn than for me to just tell you. You could sit down and I could tell you what your problems are and what you need to do and it would probably go in one ear and out the other. But if you have that aha moment, if you have a realization, even if it's just one little kernel of truth that you get from hearing yourself talk, you'll remember that you'll course correct, you'll get on top of it, that hits you, that's when you start crying and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I've been doing this. So journaling is very helpful. It's also helpful, to, there's a type of journaling called writing and burning, where you, you journal, you write, typically not in a book, but just on some loose pages. You read it back to yourself. And when you read it back, you don't have to try, you'll naturally do this. You'll read it back in a slightly objective way. We naturally do this, we self-edit naturally. You can, you, you can do this with your videos. I hate watching my videos because when I do, all I wanna do is edit myself and be like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have said that. You'll do the same thing when you read back your journal your description, your side of the story of the trauma that just happened to you. And then you, after you've read it back to yourself, you may be in a state of thought, in a, in a really pondering this whole scenario. You may have gotten some realizations, you may not. It, 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 at the very least, it may just become very clear of, of a linear direction of what happened from point A to point B to point C. It makes sense now. I wrote it out. I'm thinking about what happened and then what happened. Okay, let me write that down. And you get a very clear idea of what happened. And sometimes our trauma or PTSD occurs because we don't have a clear story of what happened. And your mind tries to fill it in. And then when you're done, on your reading what you wrote back. This is why you do it on a loose leaf sheet instead of in your journal, instead of in a book. Is you burn it. Now don't burn your house down. Put it in your fireplace or in your sink or I don't know, go in your backyard, you know. Don't burn your house down, please. But you burn it. And it becomes kind of a ritual. 
of releasing that experience from your head. It's no longer swimming around in a stew, in, uh, swirling in a muck, like your head is some toilet. You flush that toilet. Now it, it, you've released it. When you burn that piece of paper and you watch it go up into ash and burn from a solid object into a gas, into the air, and all that's left is just the crumbled ash. It disintegrates into nothing. And you can move past that scenario. That, that trauma doesn't have to be categorized in your memory banks as trauma anymore. It's just something that happened. It's all food for thought. Thanks for watching.